Hi everybody, nice to see you here again. Ah, oh, that's better. Okay, we're going back to this book again, The Treasury of Animal Stories, because as I said to you before, there are stories from all, uh, all different countries. And um, there's one here from China that I want to read, and I want to say hello to everyone in Hong Kong who's been um, tuning in to my, to my channel. Okay. Why dogs and cats are enemies? Long ago, in a city in the far-flung north of China, lived an old man and his two friends, a long-limbed dog and a midnight black cat. The old man's house was hidden behind high stone walls. No one ever went in and no one ever came out. And people began to wonder what went on inside. One evening, when the moon was wrapped in cloud, a thief climbed the walls of the old man's house. He slithered in through an open window and gazed around him in wonder. Silver lanterns lit a room laden with treasures. Jade pillars spiralled into the ceiling. Gold carvings shimmered in all four corners and exquisite paintings of dragons danced across the walls. The thief stole through the house, slipping from shadow to shadow. Finally, he crept into the room where the old man sat with the dog and cat beside him. And what would you like to eat? The old man asked his dog. The dog barked once and the man laughed. I thought so, he said, drawing from his pocket a long ivory wand. As you like it, uh, as I like it, I would like some tasty beef stew, he said, tapping the wand. All at once, a silver bowl Brimming with stew appeared in the air and floated down to the floor. The dog wolfed down his dinner, wagging his tail. And what would you like? the old man asked the cat, who was curled in a ball at his feet. The cat merely blinked at emerald eyes. The same as usual then, he said, tapping his wand. This time a gleaming pink salmon appeared and landed on the table with a slap. The cat began to eat it up as daintily as an empress dining in a palace. The old man tapped his wand a third time. Duck and plum sauce and dumplings for me, he said. A second later the food appeared, steaming in golden bowls. After supper the old man yawned, then one by one they went to bed, snuggling down into silken sheets. The thief crept silently into the old man's bedroom, took the wand, and was gone. The next morning, the old man woke and reached for the wand. Finding it missing, he frantically searched his house, toppling treasures and tearing scrolls as he looked. I'm ruined, he cried. I've lost, I'm lost without my wand. The dog padded up to his side, and the old man looked into the dog's bright, eager eyes and said, Will you be my strong legs and find the thief? The dog wagged his tail eagerly and barked. Then the old man turned to his cat. Will you be my clever mind and find the thief? He asked. The cat purred softly and licked his hand. Quick as a flash, the two animals raced out of the door to begin their search. They looked all over China for their master's wand, risking their lives and living by their wits but the thief was nowhere to be found. Then, at last, they heard of a mysterious man who had appeared from nowhere, with more money than the emperor himself. He lived in a grand house surrounded on all sides by a swirling river. I'll never make it, said the cat, as they gazed across the torrid waters. I'm far too weak, you must carry me. And she leaped onto the dog's back. The dog plunged into the water. It was so cold it made him gasp. He strained to keep his head above the surface, but the river swept around him like a thousand icy serpents. I can't go on, he panted. Come on, urged the cat. Think of, of tasty beef stew and soft silk sheets. The dog thought of his master far away and struggled on. Soon they reached the other side. 
where they both stopped in their tracks. A thief was standing outside the house with the wand dangling from a cord. Now, barked the dog, and he pelted past the startled guards, knocking the thief to the ground. Help! screamed the thief. The guards tried to grab hold of the dog, but he sank his teeth deep into the thief's robe. In a flash of fur, the cat streaked in and gripped the wand between her paws. The thief tried to snatch it back, but she sank her sharp teeth into his flesh. Ah! he yelped. As you like it! I like it! May I, may I be home again? wished the cat. Wait for me! wailed the dog, and the cat had already vanished. The next moment, the cat was back in the old man's house. It had changed completely. A cold wind whistled through the dark, empty rooms, and the old man sat alone, staring at nothing. As the cat weaved around his ankles, a smile lit up his face. You're safe, thank goodness, he cried, picking her up and, and tickling her soft silk ears. I don't care about the wand, he said. I'm just glad you're home again. And looking down, he saw the wand lying at his feet. You bought it back, he said, stroking the cat on the nose. But where's the dog? the old man asked. Did he run off and leave you all alone? The cat gazed up at the old man with her sad green eyes and mewed. That old heart, that old cold-hearted scoundrel, cursed the old man. My poor courageous cat, he added, and she settled down snugly into his lap. Summer turned to winter, and snow lay thick and heavy on the ground. One night there was a scratching at the door. The old man opened it, and there, on the doorstep, was his dog. His ear was torn, and he was thin and scraggly as a scarecrow. But he leaped and jumped and barked for joy, delighted to see his master again. Oh, oh, the old man snored. Now the cat's returned my fortune, you decided to come back, did you? Tell him what happened, the dog barked at the cat. But the sly fat cat simply smiled. If you don't stop that yapping, the old man snapped, oh, oh, I'll wish you from here to the Himalayas. And he slammed the door in the dog's face. The dog slunk away through the snow, sorrow in his heart. The cat stayed with her master and kept him to her sleek, shiny self. But all dogs have remembered the cat's betrayal that day and have hated cats ever since. <laughs> Maybe that's the truth, who knows? I don't know, but I feel sorry for the dog. Anyway, goodbye from the Treasury of Animal Stories and goodbye from Mr C. You take care now. Goodbye. Bye.